Hey everybody, welcome. It is Glee Hung here again for you on the next episode of Lore of Warcraft. Today we're kind of extending um, what we just talked about. This one's called the Yongle Migration. So this is a direct um, kind of continuation of the last story where the Pandaren uh, revolted against the Mogu. They helped unify the Yongle, the Hosen, the Jinyu, um, brought them all together to fight under a martial arts style with meditation. They developed the lore walkers and all those cool things. So now we're going to talk about the Yongle migration, the not veiled at all um, analog of the Mongols. All right, here we go. When the Mogu Empire was at its height, an intelligent bovine race known as the Yongle roamed the glassy, the grassy plains of central Kalimdor. These burly creatures lived in harmony with nature, following the guidance of the wise demigod Cenarius. Okay, so like bovine, we, we know that they're kind of yaks. And um, the connection to Cenarius is interesting. I didn't really realize that. Unlike many of the other wild gods, Cenarius was more humanoid in appearance. The majestic half-stag draped in a cloak of flowers and vines often walked among the nomadic Yongle. He taught these creatures the secrets of the wilds, and he delighted in watching them flourish. I don't know, I forgot that Cenarius was a wild god. I thought he was um, more of one of the ruling races, but okay, so he's one of the wild gods. Interesting also that he's more humanoid. Eventually, the Yongle grew weary of sharing hunting grounds with nearby trolls and decided to seek new lands. Although their beloved demigod Cenarius urged them to stay and make peace, they set out to the south. They hunted and foraged for food all the way to the edge of the Mogu Empire. Uh, so this is kind of, again, the analog of how they're like Mongols. They're not actually from Pandaria. They come from the north um, in the sort of knoll type lands and they work their way down just like the Mongols because that land down there in Pandaria was good. The emperor of the time, Chang the Merciless, found the Yongle and their immense physical strength fascinating. He ordered his flesh shapers to capture the nomads and transform them into even mightier and more intelligent servants while at the same time tempering their more savage instincts. The Yongle suffered under the tyranny of Mogu oppression for generations until they rose up alongside the other slaves to overthrow their cruel masters. Although the Yongle gained their freedom, they had lost much. Their strong oral storytelling tradition had all but vanished due to strict Mogu laws that forbade them from discussing their heritage. Much of their rich history had faded away. Some Yongle clung to the faint memories and incomplete myths of a benevolent demigod who had once watched over them. Others insisted that the Yongle should abandon all tradition and forge a new destiny by force. The disagreements grew heated and on certain occasions even led to bloodshed. Most Yongle despised the violence and set out to the north, determined to return to a life of hunting and living among the spirits of nature. I wonder where those Yongle are at. I don't remember ever seeing neutral or good Yongle. Um, also, it seems that they've, uh, yeah, they, they kind of all just forgot about scenarios. Um, some of the more nomadic tribes traveled all the way across the continent, only stopping when they reached the frigid climbs near the storm peaks. Other tribes settled in the balmy areas of central Kalimdor and reunited with their ancient benefactor Cenarius. Returning to their ancestral hunting grounds allowed them to rediscover their old traditions. Those who studied with Cenarius learned the druidic magic of the natural world, while others mastered the arts of wielding shamanic powers. Um, cool, but... Are this is this going to be the Torin? That I bet you is what's going to happen. I bet the Yongol, the ones that move north and rejoin Cenarius, that's the Torin. What are the ones that are all the way up north by the Storm Peaks? I'm trying to think about what kind of. The only thing I can think of is like those Walrus guys. Hmm. Cool, I was wondering how it was going to happen. Yet not all Yongle left the Vale. Those who stayed behind quickly found themselves at odds with the Pandaren and other liberated slaves. The Mogu flesh shaping had not completely subdued the Yongle's bold nature, and conflict after conflict ignited over matters of land and resources. Fearing an open war with their former allies, the Yongle moved west, settling outside the Serpent's Spine. That left them exposed to the Mantid, and every 100 years the Swarm would threaten to exterminate their people. The Mantid cycle and constant infighting among these Yongle led to a strong warrior tradition, one that would make them far more savage than the tribes that had gone north. 
Over the passing of generations, the energies emanating from the Well of Eternity and keeper-wrought machineries around Kalimdor changed the Yongol in unique ways. Those near the Vale would keep the name Yongol, though they grew more warlike than their distant cousins. Those in central Kalimdor, close to the Well of Eternity, would take the name Torin. Sweet, one of my favorite races. The tribes that ventured to the north near the Forge of Wills would be called Taunka, and they would adapt to the region's icy terrain. Oh, yeah. Okay, the Tonka are, now that I think about it, they are like a bison kind of furry. I'm, I'm mixing them with the with the uh, uh, walrus people. They're separate. I, I remember them now. Okay, cool. I still think the Tonka and the Yongle should be playable races. Heck, if we can have high mountain tourants, just slap a skin on them. These far-flung groups maintained contact with one another for many years, but when the Great Sundering eventually shattered the world... All connection between the tribes is lost, was lost, and I believe the Great Sundering is what we're building up to, um, which is gonna, well, what's going to make the map as we know it. Awesome! So now we know where the Torin have come from, and the Tonka. Uh, very cool. Um, I think, I mean, I like a lot of the different races, except whatever, humans are boring. But um, I have always had a special spot in my heart for the Torin, the first character I ever max leveled way back in Burning crusade days or, um, was a Torin. Uh, I did play, I think the first character I ever played was a human. That was in, in classic, but I don't, I, I didn't get super into it back then. It wasn't until Burning Crusade that I maxed someone out. All right, guys. Uh, it was a pleasure. Pretty neat. Didn't expect this little connection, although it makes sense. Um, so hopefully you learned something as well as I, uh, I'll see you in the next episode of Lore of Warcraft. Have a great one.